Greetings. Welcome to the Truth to Power show. And uh, tonight uh, I have my guest, my co-host with me, and that is Ron March. So get your pencils ready because you know Ron March always gives you a lot of information. And tonight we're going to be talking about discharging your debt. Ron March, are you there? Yes. Yes, ma'am. I am here and ready to roll. Okay, yes. well, you we're today? ready. Are you fine? We're ready. I am ready. Yep, you're ready? Uh-oh, oh, well, you're breaking a little bit, but talk some more. We'll see how it goes. All right. Okay, today's date, I want to put that out there. Today's date is uh, March the 12th, 2014, so I can notify, um, identify my uh, uh, DVDs. When we you, you you listeners call in, you can give me a date, and I can pull them right up and send you a copy. I have a couple of uh, your guests, Bev, that um, want me to send them copies, and I'm going to do that, but my time table has been very jammed here lately. I'm doing a lot of stuff, maybe too much at one time. But I will get to everyone that asked for a, a DVD, especially those that gave donations. And I want to stress that uh, I need donations to stay alive so I can set up a staff or something because it's getting kind of big at what I'm doing. But I want to also say, Beth, as I start out, that every Tuesday at 6 p.m. at Ron March Show, we are streaming live my classroom. My classes are every, every Tuesday at 6 o'clock. And uh, you, we're, we're streaming uh, the class. Right now the classes are free with donations. Now if we don't get uh, some, some, some decent donations, you know we're going to have to start charging. But right now we're going with uh, donations for the class. So that makes me be live every Tuesday at 6. This is Detroit time. Tuesday at mm-hmm. 6, Wednesday at 6 and Saturdays at 4, and each program is two hours. And my website, if you want to see me now as I stream with with uh, uh, Simulcast Beverly, you can go to my website, Ron March Show, Google Ron March Show, and tap it and go straight to my website. There's also a chat room if you have questions as to um, uh, what I'm talking about or you want me to repeat something. You can always do that rather than call in if that would be easier. Now, I'm going to give out a lot of information today because everyone in America is in debt. And you need to know the history of debt before you start trying to discharge debt. And you need to know why we're in debt. Why is everyone in debt? Now, I have a a notice of memorandum of law that I used in my class last night, and it went over quite, quite well. And I'm going to ask you to look up Google. Uh, well, maybe everyone's not on the Internet. And I, those that gave me a, a, a website, or a, not website, an email address, I will email them uh, the documents from the day's show. So everyone should try and get me a, a email address so I can deal with it. However, the name of this document is called Notice of Memorandum of Law, Points and Authorities in Support of International Bill of Exchange. Now, that second subtitle is very important, Points and Authorities. In other words, they're going to give you information, and then they're going to give you the law that backs up in support of International Bill of Sales. Excuse me, bill of sale, bill of exchange. All right. Now I'm going to go through it, and uh, it's, I, the only way to do it is to give you some, and then we'll discuss it as we do it. Now the first paragraph starts out with the condition that you're in, and that is those who constitute an associate and associate nationwide of private unincorporated persons. Now, that word is very important unincorporated persons engage in the business of banking 
to ensure to, to issue notes against these obligations of United States do them. Those are talking about people that are in debt. There are there are bill of exchange that you can use for that purpose. By legal definition, definition they're going to give you a national banking association such as notes issued against these obligations of the United States to the part of the public debt due its principles and sureties are required by law to be accepted as keyword legal tender of payment of all debts, public and private and are defined in law as obligations of United States. In your HJR 192, they talk about obligations of the United States, which is the debt that the United States is in. One more sentence. On the same par and category with Federal Reserve notes and other currency and legal tender obligations. Now, let's discuss that real quickly. Once you were born, the United States of America, notice how I say that, United States of America, those are the crooks in Washington, D.C., they stole you at birth from your mother, or your account has a, an account number. The account number is, is known as your SNN, your Social Security number. And the account is called CISAQ account. CISAQ account. And I said I was going to look up the spelling, but I, I, I haven't. So all of you, go to, my, go to my website, and if you know the spelling, give me a shot at the CISAQ account and let me know what you find. But anyway, it's called a CISAQ account. Now, the CISAQ account has a name, it has a number, and it's in a trust. The trust is called CISQ. The name is your name in all capital letters, and the account number is your Social Security number. Now, the United States immediately places at least a million dollars of this phony money off they invest in you, one million dollars, which makes it turn into a secured instrument or a secured bond that they sell on the stock market at a discount the next day of business. That's why it's all a rush, rush. They have a courier come to the hospital, pick up the ink, signed copy from your mother, and it's his job to get it to New York ASAP. They used to go to 55 uh, Water Street, and I don't know where they go down, but they take it to a building called Power of Tower, Power Tower, Tower of Power. And that's where all of the birth certificates are kept. Now, that's important because once they get it, I don't know how long it takes, but I know it's only a matter of, of an hour or less, they turn it into a negotiable instrument. And then they send it to the stock market to be sold as preferred stock at a discount, of course. So now they take that as it's sold out into the world internationally, and they invest it, and they buy things, and they start wars, and they create wars, and they do all type of negative stuff. Every, anything you can think of, they do. And you, by being a baby, are the only name on the account, and your mother or father is not because they make your mother a infomat, which means she's a snitch. And the, and the beneficiary is you, but the persons that, that work the account are United States government or United States of America. They are using your money to create this fund for you, but since you don't know it's being created, they keep it. You can't take it until you become an adult. And you turn it as an adult at 18 you're supposed to file for your funds. And the monies at your 18 today is worth a good one point, uh, not one, million dollars approximately. Nobody really knows, but it's, it's around, let's just say, 90 to $110 million each account is worth. 
and they take that money, and you don't know that they have it, so you invest it. Now, it's invested in your straw man's name. That's where it's invested. So you, being the natural person, or, quote, unquote, the sharer, you mentioned sharer right here in this first paragraph, you become the sharer of the straw man. So whatever the straw man does, you give it approval because you're the, 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 the sharer. Now, you have no idea what a sharer is. You've probably never heard of it. But what it means is, since you don't say anything through a, 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 a corporation law, since you don't say anything, they can do what they want through acquiescence or tacit contract. They can do whatever they want because you don't know what they're doing anyway. And acquiescence is a legal term that's used in corporate law. And they get away with most of their devilment through acquiescence contract where you don't know. Another one is an adhesive contract. And that would be your Social Security would be an adhesive contract because you don't even know where the money is and that it was even set up for you until you get to be 65 or 70. You'll talk about it all through your life, but you have no idea where it is and, 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 and how much it is. You have no idea. So now they take all of that money and get to flip it into the financial market. Now, due to the, uh, what can I call it, uh, there's no real money. They use your body as collateral. Your body is the collateral that backs up all of the, the devilment that the United States government do. Your body backs it up as collateral. So you are a slave through the straw man to give everything you own back to the government. Your car, your house, your wife, your children, your, your, your school, your education, everything you own. You give it back to the government. They use all of those physical uh, assets as collateral, which makes you, as a natural person of your ignorance, stay in debt because you got to keep working in order to pay off the debts and the bad investments that are made by the government. Now, how does that affect you specifically, personally, right in of your, your lifestyle today. Well, you can never pay off anything. You go through all the changes to pay off a car, but every year you have to get license, insurance, and have to register the vehicle. So you never own it. Your house, you pay, if you're lucky to pay off your mortgage, every year you got to pay taxes on the house. Okay? So property taxes. So that you never pay off anything. You just keep paying and paying and paying. And then you keep buying and buying and buying. You keep, you keep mounting the debt for them, and they just keep spending, and you have no control of it. Today, there are some very strange things going on, and I wish I could give you more information, but I'll just say this. Something very huge is about to happen in the field of finance. And I'm not going to start trying to act like I know it because they cannot let this information out or everybody will storm the banks. But let me tell you what they're planning on doing. They're going to shut down the entire banking system worldwide. They claim they're going to stop it for three to five days. But the truth of the matter is, by the time they do it three to five days, it's going to catch out in the three to five weeks. Now, the purpose of it and the and the and all the intricate parts, I have no idea. But I do know that the United States of America is so, so far in debt, and they owe so much money that they have to do certain things in order to stay afloat. Now, in my lifetime, I'm 75 years old. In my lifetime, I recall in my younger days that the Democrats always had uh, the, the, when they were in office, the economy would always slow down when the Democrats was in. When the Republicans got in, it would go up. So it made it a, ro a roller coaster cycle of every 20 years up and down, up and down.
and down. And the economy flowed pretty good because it was a natural flow. But ever since uh, Reagan, when they came up with that uh, trickle-down economics, the purpose of all of that was to make the economy stay at a high peak all the time. So they had to come up with humongous, think about this, gimmicks that created monies. So we can start with the Vietnam War. It didn't go well because they had to borrow money from the World Bank and IMF in order to pay off the debt. And they got caught stealing the oil because they were doing some offshore drilling. I won't go into all of that. But they had to pay all that back on the world level because they were stealing those seven sisters, all your oil companies, Standard Oil and, and uh, uh, BT, BT and all that. I'm not going into that. You need to do that research on your own. But then we know they gave, came into the, the, um, um, the credit card debacle. They went into the Internet debacle, and they went into the mortgage debacle. All of those things, if you knew they were coming, you would be super rich. They controlled it. That's why they made so much money off of it. That Internet package with all the satellites was a humongous a spike for them because they created enough money to do that, but they had to take out funds in order to put it all together. So that's where the debt comes from. Now, they're stealing the money as they make these investments. They are flipping our American dollar, that's not worth a plug nickel, into world currencies like the dinar, and I don't know them all, like the franc, like the sterling, all of those real uh, currency denomination monies. They have real resources to back them up. So these crooks are buying all of that, especially they're buying gold everywhere they can find it. That's why you see it up everywhere. They're buying the gold. You're paying a top dollar, or better yet, let's turn it around. You're turning your gold in, and they're giving you a worthless money. That's why it's all coming to the United States, because they want to give you that worthless money in order to get the gold, because the gold is real, and the money is play money. So now, let's stay on point. The point is, how do you discharge these debts? It's a very tricky, high-sensitive secret in order to do it. Now, let's hang tough here a minute. The United States borrowed 25 million, do 25 million real dollars in gold from the Moorish nation, and Lincoln did in 19 1861 in order to pay off or start paying off the debt that the, that the international banks, bankers wanted. Well, they didn't like that because they, he was getting the money and was trying to get it from the people. So that meant that the international bankers couldn't get any money. So they killed him. If you look up Kennedy, they killed Kennedy for the same reason because he wanted to take the silver and make real money out of the silver. If you look up Gaddafi, Muammar Gaddafi, he was going to make real money out of the, the, the dinar. This is how dangerous all of this stuff is. And they will wipe you out if you try to flip the money. Uh, the president of Iraq was the same package. He tried to use uh, uh, the dinar of Iraq and told the United States, we will not accept any more of your American dollars because they ain't worth a plug nickel. So the United States had to start buying the yen out of Japan and, and the dinar. Anywhere they could find real money, they had to start buying it. So you and I are suffering from this pressure that they are trying to maintain peaceful relationships with these international uh, uh, corporations, these uh, 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 countries. Because China told them in 1989, I believe it was, you can look this up, Wanta, W-A-N-T-A, -A, let me see, Wanta uh, Amero, A-M-E-R-O, Amero. They had to pay, they, they tried to steal the money from an ambassador to pay off China because China said we don't want any more American dollars because it's no good. And we have invested in your economy. 
And if you go bankrupt, you're going to destroy our economy, and that means war. Now, all of this is important for you to know, so you need, because you need to get your head on right, because you've been living in a dream all your life. You don't have anything. They, they hang this carrot in front of you called the American dream, and all you do is just run, 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 try to catch it, and you never catch it. The only ones that are successful, and they're not successful, really, are black a- athletes, black rappers, uh, black uh, artists, singing artists, and movie stars, stuff like that. They keep playing that in your face to make you think that the American dream is alive. It is not. And if you keep thinking that the United States is going to get out of this, they will not. Because they got this major plan coming because they shut down the banking industry. That means you don't get nothing. You can't buy gas because it's hooked up to the, to the uh, uh, credit card. Credit cards got to go through the banking system. The, 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 the electricity has got to be paid. They're not going to, everything's going to shut down. Now, I can't give you no more information than that. I got some information on here. It's called Community Leaders Brief, where they're trying to tell the community of leaders, like them jack leg, lying ass preachers. They're trying to tell them, some of those selected ones, what to do. It says, we, we have been given this brief. You have been given this brief, talking about them preachers and community leaders, so that you may understand what is happening now in regards to the closure of the banking system. Now, no, I'm not trying to put fear in you, but I'm trying to tell you that you're dealing with some crooks. And the only way you're going to understand what to do is to, number one, get a nationality. That's one thing you got to do. Because if you get your nationality, the land will come to you. You become a nation. Because we don't have a nation. Right now, you are a a straw man in that CISQ account, and you have no control over anything. We're going to talk about how to get out from under it today. So let's, deal, let's take another paragraph. This, this, this document is heavy. It's, I got four pages that I used in class last night. I had everybody on, on the edge as I read this. Oh, they read it. I don't like to read. The second paragraph is hindered for discharge of debt. Now, the instruments tendered to the bank and negotiated to the United States Treasury for settlement of their, here we go again, obligations of United States. In other words, the debt. When they say obligations, because the United States owes the money, you don't owe it because you didn't ask to get in this crap. Your mama was, didn't get full disclosure that she was putting you into a slave market. Fraud has no statute of limitation. Now, I'm not an attorney, but in order for me to get free, all your all Moors, there are true Moors, have knowledge of law, because we can only get free if we understand law. So y'all better start reading law and get it together. Where do you start? Very simple. Oh, hope I brought it with me. I know what it is, but I want to read it from, from where it is. If you want to get free, the first thing you need to do is get you a copy of the Constitution. Then you want to read article, uh, bill, uh, what they call it? Uh, the first ten articles are called the Bill of Rights. You want to read the Bill of Rights. And then you want to make sure that you know the uh, contract that the Moors gave the United States called the Treaty of Peace and Friendship. The Treaty of Peace and Friendship. We're going to go into that uh, next time or very soon. We'll go into that because that's the most important uh, document in the United States is the treaty. Because Article 6 says all treaties, agreements, contracts that were made prior to the Constitution of the United States shall be, not maybe, not may, shall be the supreme law of the land. When I come back from break, I'll read that article to you. It's Article 6 of the Bill of Rights. That that Article 6 and that treaty that I'm telling you about, even all of the Articles of Confederation, 
All of those are supreme law of the land. Most of you never heard of Article of Confederation, and surely you don't have any idea what a treaty is. But all of those come before, not after, before the Constitution of the United States. And they deal in everything that's bothering you is in the uh, uh, Bill of Rights. And then you have uh, uh, 26, but you only need to know, what do they say, 13 of the amendments. Because when you read the amendments, they'll tell you that most of them were ratified prior to created this United States of America. Now, you got to get into this. And I don't have it all in front of me, but I definitely have it with me. So we're going to get into that today, and uh, we're going to get to it, okay? Now, everybody knows every time you get a presentment in the mail, like bill, gas, bill, car note, house note, tel- tel- uh, insurance note, doesn't matter. You get a note. Once you read it, you go down to the bottom of the, of the major page. It's a little coupon down there. And most of the time, it will say, if it don't say coupon, they'll say, tear this off and remit it with your payment. Cash, check, a money order. And there you go. You go out and get a check. You go here, you go there. Most of them say, don't send cash. It's got to be a money order or a check. Do not send cash. Now, hang on to that in your noggin, but we're going to get back to that. We talked about the summit of the obligations of the United States. Are you still with me, Beth? Yeah, we're, we're here. We're Can you hear right. me? Yes, yes. Okay. Now, under Title 18, USC, Section 8, write that down. Title 18, USC, Section 8, representing as a definition, provide a Certificate of indebtedness drawn upon an authorized officer of the United States, parentheses. In this case, the State of Treasure. When you start using these negotiable instruments, you've got to write on it, payable to Secretary of Treasury. Now, it's issued under an act of Congress. All of this comes from an act of Congress, meaning it is law. Now listen to this. In this case, Public Law 73-10, that's number one, write that down. 70, public Law, PL, Public Law 73-10. Number two, H.J.R. 192, H.J.R. is House Joint Resolution of 1933, H.J.R. 192 of 1933, and Here's a, here's a humdinger. Title 31, USC, 3123, and 31, USC, 5103. Let me give you that last one again. Title 31, USC. That means United States Code. They codified it so you can't find it. USC, 3123, and USC, 5103. Both of them come under Title 31. These four documents will not only save your life, it'll get you out of debt. You hear what I say? It will get you out of debt. Now, in addition to this, they say, and by treaty. Now, that's important because the treaties back up these articles. 7310, uh, uh, HCR 192, uh, 31 USC 3123, and 31 USC 5103. Look them up. You need to bring them in your noggin, read them every day. Every word you don't understand, get a black law dictionary and look it up. Because I ain't going to be here forever. You need to get your head all right so you can start doing research and free your own self. Because you can't be sovereign. If you don't stand up on your square as an individual, no one can stand in for you if you claim to be free. That's the problem that we have. Because all of our education says we need help. Everybody is dependent 
They made it clear that you will be dependent. We don't own nothing. We are all dependent on somebody, and that should not be. We have no idea how to free ourselves. And that's why they burn all your, your, every time there was a riot, every time the the European act like he's got some major uh, project, they always bring it through the black community. Nobody says a word. They're doing it right now. And if I go back to um, um, uh, a really racist, and I told you about the uh, trickle-down economics, I can go back to Truman when he signed the first of low housing deal. I'll tell you about that. Then after Truman came Eisenhower, he signed the major highway bill. Everybody said, oh, he's happy. The problem was the housing, low-income housing, he tore down all the housing in the black community and did not give money to get back in the homes because he raised the rent and the, pro- and, and the property of value. So you call help. Trying to, try to live. It's it. So most of you moved out, never realized what was going on. Then when, in the 50s, when they came up with that Eisenhower of, of bill, millions were spent of our money, but they brought the highways through our community. And then when they did the bypass, like in Detroit, we got 75, red, white, and blue. That is a, a, a United States highway, expressway, whatever you want to call it. Yes. Then they tell you you can do bypasses. So 375, 475, 275, they all come off of 75. But what did they do? It made sure they ran one of those highways, expressways, through the black community right down the middle of the financial district of all of the United States to make sure you stay dependent on them. And your mind, psychologically, that's all you think about today. Well, I've got to have a job. i got to go work Monday. i got to do this. i got to do the police officer. He won't give me a ticket. All of that trash is psychological warfare that they put on you. And when you understand law, you'll find out that no one, hear me clear, has a right to do anything to you. Because everything that comes out of Washington, D.C. is not only fictitious, it's unlawful. They didn't have a right to set up democracy. Because the contract called the United States Constitution says you cannot take in a new government. But that's another story. Okay. Now, here we go. I want y'all to hear this clear. This is a humdinger. I gave you Title 18 USC Section 8. Now, I went and looked up Title 18, Part 1, Chapter 1, Section 1, and Section 8. So it comes like that. I hope y'all writing this down. Now listen to this. Obligations or other, or other securities of the United States define the term obligation or security of the United States Includes, y'all write this down. I'm going <laughs> to, you ain't going to believe it. So you need to look it up for yourself. I don't care if you don't believe it. The obligations or other security of the United States define. They're going to tell you how you pay off your debt. And it's backed up by Title 18, Section 8. Now here you go. I may have read this in my class last night. You thought we was in the first grade, man. <laughs> I may read it twice. So I'm, <laughs> I'm going to read it once slow. Number one, all bonds, any bond you have, you can pay off debt. Certificate of indebtedness. If you don't know what it is, look it up. I don't know. The national bank currency. Federal Reserve notes. Federal Reserve Bank notes, breaks yourself on this one, Bill. Coupons is a legal security instrument to pay off obligations of the United States of America. Coupons. And every utility that comes to you is printed right on the on your bill. Payment coupon. Now they're gonna tell you, we don't know what that is. 
You have to send cash, check, or money on it. They are breaking the law when they say that. They cannot tell you how to pay. Next one. United States notes. Next one. Treasury notes. Gold certificates. Silver certificates. Uh, fractional notes. Certificate of deposit. Bills. Dang, I never heard of that one. Checks or drafts for money drawn by or upon authorized officers of the United States, stamps, and other re- representatives of value of whatever denomination issued under any act of Congress and cancel and and all cancel United States stamps. Now, I don't have answers to all of that. I can't tell you what each one of them is because I ain't got, no, I haven't had time to go into it specifically. But I'm telling you, quit whining about paying bills. Go to Title uh, 18, USC, Section 8, and read it for yourself. It's entitled Obligation or Other Securities of the United States, and they define what the securities are. The term obligation or other securities of the United States includes bonds. I ain't going to go through it again. But you got bonds, certificate of indebtedness, national bank currency, federal reserve notes, federal reserve bank notes, coupons, United States notes, treasury notes, gold certificates, silver certificates, fractional notes, certificate of deposit, bills, checks. A draft of money drawn by or upon authorized officers of the United States, stamps, and other representatives of value of whatever denomination issued under any act of Congress and canceled United States stamps. I bet that can't get no clearer than that. All of this comes under one title, Title Eight. Now, they talk about the International Bank of Exchange is a legal tender as a, nat- of a national bank note or note of national banking association by legal and or statutory definition. What they're talking about now is how they are paying off the international debt. See, they deal with promissory notes most of the time. They take that, that house that you got. They use the promissory note as a negotiable instrument, sell it in the open market at a discount. They'll put X number of market, excuse me, promissory notes together, and let's just say they come up with a billion dollars. I'm just going to throw that number at you. Your note is in there. That means that your note has been separated from your mortgage. I'm giving you all a little insight now. And all the laws of the states, all the laws of the National Banking Act of 1864 says that the note and the mortgage must stay together. But your mortgages all have been recorded in the county. Boom. But you don't, they never record the note because they got to sell it. And once it gets into the pot, like I mentioned, that billion dollars, it is gone forever. And I'll ask you one question. If I borrowed money from you and I gave you a IOU and I come back to pay you and you don't have the IOU, I'd be an idiot to pay you, right or wrong. Because <laughs> all you have to do is wait, take the money, and then go downtown and, and uh, file charges that I, I refuse to pay you because you got an IOU that's a, that's a contract. And Ron Marsh failed to, to, to live up to the contract. And you see it every day on uh, uh, that damn Mathis, that old Judge Mathis. You see it on all that crap, uh, Judge Judy. All they want to know is where's the contract. Here it is. Case closed. You pay, you go home. You get the money. You Because of the contract. A promissory note is a contract. It's just like an IOU. So why would you want to pay your house off and not get your contract back? And you do it every day. Why pay off the car? You don't get to, you don't get the note back. Why pay off your refrigerator? 
Oh, anytime you sign your name, you create a promissory note. So that don't and mean you anything. Get- Ron, when you pay, just say when you pay your house off and they send you a discharge note that has been paid. That means nothing. That means nothing. It's just a certificate like you did something good, just like your birth certificate. That was just an award that you turned a slave in. And when you get that a discharge you're talking about, that's just an award that you're the biggest idiot in the world. Because you're supposed to get your promissory note back. Now, what do you say? All you do is say, I'd like to validate the debt. What does validation mean? Show me you have my mortgage and my promissory note. Ink copy. Remember that, remember that term. Ink copy. They can send you a carbon copy of anything that they want. But you want an ink copy, a wet ink copy, so you can see the blue ink that you signed it with. And you want to see both sides, because anytime a note moves, someone has to stamp it. Right. And, and sign. We don't know that. Okay, this is the reason, one of the reasons why we're in debt. We pay off stuff. Even when you go and trade a car in, now, look at that. They get the first car, that's called the Cadillac, and we want to use $50,000. Okay, good. You make two years' payments, you want to go and trade it in. Okay? You take it in and sign a new contract for 50000 Now, they got $100,000 that they got in their pocket because you didn't get the first one back, and they're going to sell the second one also. And you're riding around in a car that you can never own because you got to keep buying license, insurance, and registration. Mm-hmm. <laughs> sound like, it, it sound like a, a con game to me. It's a big con game. And the only reason it works because people are ignorant. That's the only reason it works. The only reason it works. Now, there has to be a remedy. This is a statutory remedy for equity interest recovered due to principles and sureties of the United States for discharge of lawful debt in commerce in conjunction with United States obligations, their debt, to that portion of the public debt it is intended to reduce. The reason that the uh, United States debt is so high is because the crooks have been putting the real money in their pocket. For example, when you pay any uh, uh, bill, uh, and they call it presentment, if you make any payment on a presentment, you're actually paying twice. Why? The first one, they say, send the coupon with your payment. So they take the coupon to pay for their uh, uh, expenses, and they put the dollar in their pocket. You pay twice. <laughs> it's deep. Say that. Right. Yes, yes. You say that yes. Anytime you pay a presentment and they tell you to be sure and send the coupon with your payment, and they always say that. And then they'll add, make a check or money order, payable too, that type of stuff. So when you send it in, you're going to send in a Federal Reserve note for $50, and you're going to sign the coupon that's $50, because it's right on the coupon. If you look at any coupon, lay your personal check next to the coupon, and everything is identical. Up to and including, across the bottom, they got a routing number on the coupon. It's a deck. You got your account number and your routing number on the coupon. You got your check number and your routing number on the check. And you're taking both of them, signing them, and sending it in. Now, if that ain't paying twice, what is it? You got the amount. You got the name of the company. You got the bank name. You got your name. You got your name. You got a line for signature, a line for signature. What else am I missing? Every one of them is the same. 
send it in. And some of you send it in early. <laughs> and then they tell you you want to keep your credit up. You cannot have credit unless you're in debt. And then you wind up being in debt. I want to keep my credit up. Well, keep buying and making payments, and you stay in debt. That's the psychological warfare or brain warfare they put in you to keep your credit good. And everybody says the same thing. When they come to me and want me to help them on the market, and they say, well, this mess up my credit. I look at them and say to myself, this is an idiot. Your credit already shot to ain't making market, market payments. Whatever I do has got to be for the benefit, because what can you lose? Oh, I never thought about it that way. What other way can you think about it? And they know they cannot keep your foreclosure mortgage on your credit report over, I think it's 18 months. There's a timetable on that. Because it's a illegal process. The entire for, uh, for, uh, foreclosure is an illegal process, no matter how you look at it. Why? Because they already been paid with the promissory note. And not only do you lose your promissory note, not only do you lose the payments that you made, you also lose your house. Somebody should go to jail. Now, I got something here. What time is it? Are we doing pretty good? Okay. Uh, you, uh, yeah, we we uh, we uh, it's, uh, we got about ten more minutes, fifteen more minutes. Okay. Did you do want you to have any? Yeah, break, yeah okay. let me take a couple of calls. Yes. Okay. Let's take a uh, you couple can, of calls. You can call in at 347-215-8041. We have a call here at 860-680. Beverly, yes, put me on mute for a second. Beverly, put me on mute. I'm not ready yes. yet. Give me, give me a few minutes. You're not ready yet? Okay, all right. He wasn't ready yet. Do you have any more? Okay. Uh, no. What about uh, you? If you have a question for Ron, uh, 347 215 You have yes. a teacher here. Ask your question. Okay, okay go ahead, Ron. Uh, I got a couple of uh, 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 messages. Okay. And I'm trying to read them fast. Uh, on the information, and I'm looking at the Monroe. Oh, they want me to talk about the Monroe Doctrine. Community in the every black community in Detroit has been taken over by foreign aliens. You follow me, Beth? Has been invaded by foreign aliens that steals your economics. Yeah. Such as Detroit as the Arab community, such mm-hmm. as uh, California, I think, as Iranians are out there. I can't name them all, but they're all over the place. You know what I mean? The Monroe Doctrine that was signed in 1823 said that you cannot come into our communities and steal our economics. This is what used to stop Khrushchev from coming into our hemisphere and bringing missiles into Cuba. He used the Monroe Doctrine to stop him, which is a part of the Constitution. Notice they use the Constitution when they get ready to use it. But when we bring it up, they say, well, we don't know nothing about that. So uh, Khrushchev was bringing uh, missiles into Cuba as economic purposes which would be for protecting Cuba and United States. But yet they let the Arab nation come in and buy up all of our party stores. First they convince us that we are stupid and can't, uh, uh, too ignorant to know how to run business. They make that clear. Then they say we won't buy from each other because we don't want to stick together. Those are those agents start that line. So when they bring in the Arab and South Africa, that's what's happening. That's what's happening in Detroit. We go to a better job. Of, uh, uh, I, uh, 25 and 
put Hastings Streets back on top. Did you hear that? Biff? What? Yeah, you kind of Did broke you up hear? a little yep. bit. Yep. They want to bring... Let them know the realm of law and points. And that's what I, I'm reading from. And they found the document. And the authority, they found it exactly. So it's out there. You can go look it up and check it out. And then he says, um, you are moving very fast. The term, legal term, is on every bill. That's very correct. Because they're trying to make you think that, they're, that that's the only bill you can use. But I just gave you a list that can be used to pay off the debt. And every debt you have is a United States debt because they own everything you have. You see the you see the, the gimmick to it, Beverly? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, that's all I got in the chat room. They give you a, a letter of satisfaction when you pay off the mortgage. They call it satisfaction of mortgage. It's a notice right. of satisfaction. Yes. And that's trash. You should send it back and tell them you want your promissory note. If not, you can Because they so can come never, back. So you, so you never do get your promissory note. That, that just went, that's just gone out in space somewhere. Yes. When, when they, they call it a, a, a pool. I can't think of the real name for it. But when they put it in a pool to create those large sums of money, your your promissory note dissolves. It goes in at uh, 65000 100000 115000 But once it gets in the pool, it turns into a billion dollars. Mm. So how can they tell where, where your promissory note is? It's like making uh, uh, some orange juice. And you got oranges and I have oranges. We put them on the table. How do we know which one is yours and which one is mine? Because they're already in a pot. They got to know. Yes, you do. But you can produce it. And I did not give you permission to destroy the note. And the law says you cannot foreclose on me if you don't have the note because you need the note to prove that you are the uh, party of interest who owns the, the, the house. And you can only do that with holding the note. The only way you can prove, Beverly, that I owe you is to hold my IOU. You can't get away okay. with that on the first. So, okay. Uh, so, okay, I've been to some closings where, uh, let's say I closed on the house, and then another person comes in right after I sign all the papers. They come in, and then they buy the promise so they find the promissory note once the, uh, I close on it, and then they come in and buy the promissory note ten minutes after I close on it. it so that's not legal, is? <laughs> I'm glad you said that. In other words, you you been you know how to you you know how to close a deal, right? Yeah, yeah. So what they do, they make sure that the buyers are gone or not in the area. When they come in, they don't buy it when they come in. They take it. Wow. Yeah, you're, sure, you're right because they waited, they waited until the buyers left out the room, and then they came yes. in the room and they paid for it. Yes. And they move fast. They snatch it quick. Now, when I closed, I was looking for that, but they tricked me because they told me that they needed my uh, driver's license because they wanted to check my credit again or something, they said. So I said, okay. So when I went in my wallet, my pocket, and pulled out my wallet, they went through the stack of papers and pulled out the promissory note. Mm-hmm. Now, to my, to my amazement, I saw them go in and lay everything. They were supposed to give me a copy, a make a copy of my promissory, I mean of my driver's license. But what they really did, they made a copy of the promissory note. They put the real promissory note on the table and brought the copy back out and stuck it back into the to the stack. Yes, and I you see know this. Yes. Now, here's something that really will blow your mind since you're in it. If 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 I'm a buyer and you're my realtor and we go in to close and I out of out of my knowledge 
knock all the papers on the floor. I'm saying, let's say I made an accident or drinking coffee and spill it. No, 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 no. I just dropped the papers on the floor and they scatter. So now I pick them all up. You know what you're going to have to do? What? You're going to have to postpone the closing because you don't know how to stack the papers like they were. So that's how come the people at the title company, when they sit there and do the closing, they be, they be all over them papers. Yes, and the, yes, and they make sure that they stay in order. That's my point. Yeah. If I yeah. accidentally knock them on the floor, they'll cancel it. They we can't do it today. My my wife just called me. She had a heart attack. We got to cancel. So out of your ignorance, you say, oh, I hope she's all right. He's a damn lie. He got to restack them papers exactly the way the law says they have to be. Because as you sign, you, you gain something, and then you give it back. You gain something, yeah. and you give it back. You don't know what you're signing for. To beat all him. You're absolutely right. I would tell you what I'd like for you to do, and I don't know how you could do it. If you could just steal a stack after they stack it, I'd like to see that stack to see what the hell we are signing. Because you don't know. And all they do is pull up, they put up the corner and say, just they tap it, say, put your initials right there. Put your, put your initials right there. Sign this one, sign that one. Right. Put your initials right there. Right. Am I right? You're right. right. So that's. They're stealing your house before your, your face, and you don't know what's happening. They take that promise, they know, lay it on the table, and as soon as you walk out of that room, somebody's coming to get it, or somebody's going to take it to the bank, and that bank will be open. I don't care how late you close. You, you try to close between, uh, you know, let's just say 10 a.m. And, and, and 3 p.m. But if you have to go into 6, 8, or 9 o'clock, I guarantee you somebody's going to be at that bank. Waiting on that note. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm telling you, I done been into this thing. I done studied it from all ends, and I see it. I don't know everything I need to know, but I see what they're doing. And it's all a game, and it's crooked. And you lose, because you, if I'm buying the house, there's one sheet that they sign, and I've never seen it. But it says now that you purchase a house, and I'm going to give it back to you, and now I'm going to rent from you. They say it's a letter of, of tenant, a tenant. I want to be a tenant in my own house. And you sign that contract. I've never seen it to know it, but they tell you it's there. That's why they can take you to 36th District, which is a landlord of uh, 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 court. Not a, I mean, a landlord, what they call it? Uh, I can't say it fast enough. But you don't need to be in a landlord court because you are an owner. Why do you go to 36th District? Landlord tenant. There you go. They call 36th District when you get your summons papers. They call it landlord tenant court. Now, I'm not a landlord and I'm not a tenant. I'm the owner of the house. What the hell am I doing in that court? Because some of those papers you signed gave them permission to rent it to you. And you don't know which one of them papers it was. They take it out. So when they send you your documents, you know, through the mail, they'll never get, they'll, they'll send you a phony promissory note, and they'll take out that con, that, that contract that said that you you are a tenant. And, you, and, so and I can feel your head. That's how come ahead, some people, when they, when they pay their note, uh, they pay it at just, say, one bank, and then six, seven months later, they tell it, sending them a note saying that you need to pay it at over here because they unfold yes. the note. They unfold the note. It's then started its path to Wall Street. And once it gets to Wall Street, they destroy it. They only need the, the, the paper to show up. It's supposed to be destroyed. They do it electronically in all kinds of ways. And the banks here are supposed to destroy it. But they keep it to make you think that it's a legal document. But, you know, they can never bring it out because the government will get them because they call that double dipping. That means that you're proving that you're making money on Wall Street from the dividends and you're making people pay to get in the house. That's double, that's double dipping. And there's an a IRS law against double dipping. They'll come down on your butt so fast, make your head spin about double dipping. Because IRS loses everything when it comes to double dipping. Right, man, let's, top it out. let's take a quick one. Let's okay, do it and, uh, Ron, 
Ron, I'm going to call yeah. you when we go on this break for a minute, okay? Okay. All right. Hello. Welcome Hello. back to the Superpower Show. Yes, Ron. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can. We can hear you clear. Oh, yeah. Now, is, is it clear? We have a, yes, we can. We can hear you. All right. Go ahead. Uh, we have a couple of calls. You want to take your calls and then go uh, back into um, the uh, yes. presentation? Yes, okay. that would be nice. We're going to take area call 586 <clears throat> Hey, peace. Can you hear me? Yes, yes sir. Peace. Hey, what's up? This is Chaos uh, in the Detroit area. Hi, How y'all Chaos. doing tonight? Great. All right, we're good. Okay. Go ahead, brother. You know, you know, I was talking to to a buddy of mine about the bank shutdowns. I I had heard you talking about it last week, and I'd already seen in my spirit that this was coming this year. Yes. Okay. So you were just confirmation about that. What I want to know, oh, and while we were talking, my, the call got cut off. And the way the call got cut off, it's like, okay, they, they really up on what's going on as far as monitoring and everything. So the big thing yeah. – the big thing that, that, that a lot of people that I talk to, because a lot of people ain't up on this kind of stuff. So the big thing that people really want to know is what do you do? First of all, what I want to know is what do I do to get more information on this? Um, secondly, what can people do to sort of prepare for something like this? Well, uh, during the 2000 uh, century turnover, they had that Y2K stuff. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. I went out and purchased um, a lanterns uh, for kerosene to see lanterns, and we yeah, bought a lot of kits. to get their uh, survival kits. I've been telling yes, people about, to get their survival kits together. Mm-hmm. And, and buy uh, water, buy water in the gallon, plastic gallons. You'll be surprised how much a plastic gallon of water costs versus those little eight ounces and, and ten ounces. You can get a gallon for uh, in, in the supermarkets. For 98 cents and maybe at 109, get a whole gallon of water. Maybe you want to buy 10 or 15 of those gallons of water. So yeah, I make, yeah, I make my own purified water at home. Actually, okay. I have a, a triple filter water system that actually um, that filters but, out fluoride but, and everything. Yeah. But if it's, if it's ran by electricity, you may not get it to do what you want it to do, and we don't really okay. know. Right. No, it's not. It's still it's straight from the faucet through the filter into you know into my oh, uh, jugs. Okay. But I know what you're right. saying. Though. It's still good to have, still good to have water stocked up. Yep. So I, yep. I, I, I'm gonna definitely looking to start doing that. Yep. And and there's not much you can do other than I, I'm gonna tell you you can take it any way you want. You want to be sure and get you a some type of weapon to protect your family. Because if you go outside and start barbecuing because you don't have gas. In your house, mm-hmm. somebody smell it, and they come try to pick it. But people, when they get hey, hungry, I, you hey, know what I'm saying? Hey, I, hey, I stay strapped. I, I'm, I'm permitted. So I stay strapped. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, and, and I'm, spirit, I'm spiritual. I'm spiritual, but I stay strapped. <laughs> I hear you, brother. I hear you. So there's not much you can do on this type of thing because the banking is going to be a little different than that Y2K because, you know, at least you could go and get a uh, uh, – of your credit card or your money would come. But I'm looking at all the jobs are going to have to shut down. They're not going to have the proper uh, electricity and stuff to run these jobs. So it, it, That's it what could I'm be. Thinking about that. Yeah, everything, everything is pivots off the banking system. Yes. Mm-hmm. You can't have yeah. your electricity. You can't have your Internet. Everything, everything is Internet now. Everything depends on the banking system yes. and the internet. So yes. I'm trying to fig- yes. I'm trying to put it together now. Figure out you know figure out a game plan because people go people are gonna go if it's anything like when we had that you remember that power outage we had yes yeah. yeah. for three days and, I think it was like yeah, three days and, four and days. man yeah. folks was going nut they was going ape shit when we had that uh, yeah. that power yeah. outage man they was they yeah. pulled all the water off the shelves you couldn't find water nowhere they was they yeah. was trying to you know, get every every bit of gas they could out of the ground. They had people pumping gas out the ground at the gas stations. People fighting at the gas pumps. And yes, I'm yes. just you know, I'm just thinking listen, about. Listen, listen, young man, why don't you email also, me so we can set up depends. a? I right, go ahead, Ben. Ben. It also depends on the community you in because when for those three days, 
uh, our block, and, and we have a block club, but we party for those three days, and we shared our water. Mm-hmm. We put the barbecue grilled outside. We, we, we fed each other. Everybody bought different stuff out. Uh, so oh, we mm-hmm. had uh, one of the neighbors had a movie projector. We had that on the lawn. We sat outside in the neighborhood, watched the movies. The police even came and sat and, w- and looked at the movies with us. So we <laughs> it's how to handle it. And also okay. we have to learn how to get into the bargaining system. You know, I yeah, get a barter, yeah, yeah, bartering, yeah, bartering, yeah, barter. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, and listen. You don't have all your man. money in the bank. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. I, I want you to email money me. On the bank. I got this. We need to set up a survival network. So you email me, and we'll start putting stuff on the internet of the people okay. that we are dealing with, of what we know. Okay. I went through that okay. 2000 thing, and you got some insight on it. Beverly got some on it. And, we can just and, I'm a, and I'm an IT guy. I'm an IT guy on top of that. So if, if yeah. you know, you need it's anything on, on that end, I handle all of that. Yeah, okay. I, I handle all of that too. I do websites, all of that. So oh, yeah, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna do you one better though. I'm gonna come out and see you because I know you. Um, you do your classes on what is it Tuesday nights? Tuesday, over at Island Park, twelve five eleven Woodward, right okay. off of Davidson. Yes. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna try to get down to see you. Um, but I'm, but on top of that, I'm definitely going to email you. We need to we need to go on ahead and put something together. Yeah, we need sure. to try to help everybody so we can get together right. and we'll put out what we agree on putting out. Okay. Okay. That's All right, buddy. I, pre- I appreciate you, man. Don't stop doing what you're doing. We need more people like you, man. I appreciate. Don't Thank stop you. doing what you're doing, man. I, right. I appreciate. All right. And, and thank you, thank you, Chaos, for listening. Mm-hmm. All right now, hey Beverly, get in touch with me. We need to uh, we need okay. to talk too. So okay, okay, I will. I'll call you. All right. All right. Uh-huh. All right, Bev, you got another caller? Yes, eight six zero six eight zero. Are you ready now? Hey, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can hear. Yes, you can. Can hear All right. So one question, Ron. Um, is it supposed to happen like around this month or next month? They stop, 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 stop. Well, okay. I'm, I'm just giving you what I what I can pick up. If they okay, can't I'll give a date. Because they give a date. Yeah, you can't give no date yet because they do they're going to change it. All right. Now, now, don't say that as if I have a date. I don't have a date. Okay? okay. Let's make that clear. And, but we try to prepare I, ourselves whenever it comes. Go ahead, Bill. I've heard that it was supposed to be this month, so I don't know. So yeah, it, it, it's, it's going to probably going to do it during the maybe somewhere in this astrology, maybe Mar- in Aries. I'm not sure. Possibly before spring starts. So maybe. Yep. But, but, but one thing, um, because I, I really, you know, one thing I did stop with the bank a few years ago, so and I was going to open back up again. I guess that'd be a bad move now to even do that now if they go and like shut down the banks. Yes, you're right. You're right. You want to wait on? I would wait till the other side to see what they're going to come out with. Because okay. uh, if they shut down for three to five days and it extends to three to five weeks, there's a lot of adjustments and a lot of money will be saved. They can balance their books if they do that. So we may be in for another 100 years or 75 years of the same madness when they come back. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Okay, okay. If, if we don't kill each other during this period of time, so I, 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 and that's all I can say. I don't know, and I don't have any insight other than I want to prepare my wife and family so that we don't, you know, starve doing this thing or get killed. Okay. All right, so let me see what question I asked besides that. Um, you said about that. Okay. And the thing with the, um, the mortgage and their yes. double dip, which they've been doing for such a long time, yeah. So anybody, let's say that buys a house in the bank, they get this note, or yes. they, they ask, okay, all right. When you buy anytime, listen, brother. Anytime you sign your name, anytime you create a you keep you create a contract and a promissory note. Mm-hmm. That's where money comes from. Because all you got to give is your sweat from your brow and your credit. It's what they do. They steal your credit. So, yes, every time you do it, they get a promissory note, and they cash the promissory note. Okay. Okay. 
I see. All right. All right. And last question, since they're doing this, now, I mean, is they going to stop sending mail or mail still going to be functioning? Regular I would think mail. they stop sending mail. Okay. okay. Because they have to start the mail electronically. You yeah, know, they like, you know, they like Pony Express. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I know about that. Yeah, I heard about the 25th. Yeah, <laughs> unless they want to go back to that. I doubt, I doubt yeah. that they don't want to go back to that. Yeah. So, so what will happen? So I, I, you know, I do. Um, after the show, I'll just give you a link to, to talk any more about anything else. How's that? All right. Yeah. Good. All okay. right. Thank you. Appreciate you. Come on, man. Thank you. And, All uh, right. And also, uh, yeah. people to stack up stack up on their bullets, you know, because, you know, the, the government bought up a lot of the bullets, and so you yes. have to yes. ensure that you have some bullets to go in those guns. Yes, yes, yes. So you got to get it all, and you got to be prepared. So you, that's all I can say. You know, you got to prepare yourself. If it happens, you, you're ready, and if it don't happen, you still can eat the food and use the stuff that you got. So you can't go right. wrong. But you want to be sure to have it before the rush comes. Because when it goes down, it's going to be a mean rush for all the food in supermarkets, like it was during that three- and four-day shutdown that you're talking about, Beth. That food left yeah. within, what, 12 hours. The supermarkets were empty. Yeah. So you got to and know so what you're I doing. Heard the su- I heard the supermarket only have, like, three days of food anyway. Yes, yes. Well, I think the supermarkets are being told when the date is. Somebody doing that in those big conglomerates, they know when the date is, and they are preparing and will know. This is like that letter that I told you I had called the Community Leaders Brief. And they are and they are letting every not everybody, but letting people know. This is seven pages. It's called Community Leaders Brief. That's all I can tell you. And it came from www. Here's a good one www.prepare for America for change. Oh, that's, that's deep. Dot com. You got it, Beth? www.prepare for change. The for is for is the numerical for. Okay. Dot com. Wow. Yes. Well, what did, Obama, what did uh, Obama say? He said he was going to make some changes, didn't he? Well, yeah, well, you're right. But I don't think it's Obama. Yeah, you know, this international bankers are dictating all of this. That's who, that's who he worked for. Yes, he's a, he's a CEO of the plantation known as United States of America. And it's got a breakdown, a complete breakdown on everything that uh, you need to know, except the date that they're going to exercise this thing. It's called the Community Leaders, and you can get it at www.prepare for change. And the four is a numerical four. Dot com. Okay. All right. Now I've got my nephew out of Minnesota uh, on the computer, and I want him to go online and let me know if he pull if this thing will come up. So, so, Roy, check out www.prepare, P-R-E-P-A-R-E, the numerical for change, C-H-A-N-G-E, dot com. And he can shoot it back to me, and when I get it, I'll let everybody know that that's where you want to go. All right, Ben, what else you got? That's it. That's it? Okay. Yeah. All right, now. Uh, what I got for you this hour is uh, number one. Everything that happens in America is earmarked for Black America. Everything from channels, TV, racism, you name it. It's it's all the overtones is always to Blacks, and the reason for that is because the land belongs to Blacks. Now, they'll never tell you this, but it it, it belongs to blacks. Now, I told you earlier, I had this uh, paragraph that talks about the people of the United States, black people. Now, listen carefully. Your United States Republic Constitution, which consists of seven articles and ten amendments, 
with three being lawfully added prior to 1861. So you got ten amendments, and then you have Amendment 11, 12, and 13, and they all were added prior to 1861, which means they were, they were added before the government shut down with that I'm trying to say it. S i n e d i e, sinai dei, dei, and we already talked about that. Sinai dei is Latin meaning without a fixed date. Now, here's what it says: Those African descent cannot be citizens. That was in the Thirteenth Amendment. The Moors cannot be. That means we Moors are outside any jurisdiction of corporate United States of America, de jure or otherwise. That means that everything that goes on in the United States, although they're earmarking it to us, it does not affect us as a law because we are the owners of the land. And according to Dred Scott, we can never be citizens of United States of America. Now, if you don't believe it, I know you're going to try to act like I don't know what I'm talking about. But if you go and look up Article, I mean, uh, Amendment, 13th Amendment, and it's only going to give you two sections. First section is going to say there's no slavery and there's no involuntary servitude. And then article, Section 2 is going to say, but Congress has a right to put your butt in jail if they give you a fair trial. Now, the trick in those two sections is there are 20 sections, not two, 20. So let's go back and type in and then say all 20 sections. You want to see a 13th Amendment, all 20 sections. And then I want you to go to Section 12. And Section 12 says... Anyone of African descent cannot be citizens of the United States. That tells you right there. None of this trace belongs to you. You're only in it by your mind. You only think you are part of it. And then you have those Jack Lake preachers and them civil rights all-stars. You know I love to get them. Civil rights all-stars, those Negro pundits, those AKAs, and those boules who get special privileges and benefits to pump you with all of that Uncle Remus history about coming over on a slave ship and all of that madness that you think is real and you believe that they're doing something for you because they brought you out of the jungle. So I don't know how else I can tell it to you other than you go and look at Dred Scott, read them. Uh, don't read the stories that they print, but try to get the case, read the case, and see what Roger T. Teddy, T-A-N-E-Y, see what his ruling was. He was the judge in charge, and he gave a ruling that Europeans have nothing to do with black people. We don't like it, we don't want it, and you can never be a part of our government. He said no clear. Then you go to Arctic, uh, Amendment, 13th Amendment, and ask for all 20 sections. And then you go to Section 12. Or you can put in 13th Amendment, Section 12. You can do that right now. 13th Amendment, Section 12, and read it for yourself. Don't take my word for it. Read it for yourself. And it says almost all corporations, in the United States of America, operate under unlawful rules, regulations, and they are treasonous. They are committing treason. Every corporation commits treason. None are authorized by the United States Republic Constitution. And you owe all your money, all the debt that you have, you owe to corporations that don't exist. Good gracious. If you look up the definition of corporation, it's an entity of a fictitious entity. It's like Casper. 
and the only one that can talk and deal with corporations is Casper. And your straw man is Casper. Corporations can only talk to corporations. They cannot talk to natural persons. I don't know how to say it anymore. Your straw man owes money to the corporation, not you. That's why you can use these instruments to, to discharge it because you want to protect your straw man. Oh, this will be every stuff. But you've got to prepare yourself for a fight because none of them are going to say, oh, we accept your paperwork. Because now, the first, yes. Now, now I, I'm just, I'm just uh, looking at it from the corporation's uh, point of view. So okay. uh, they say that um, the straw man, but then they look at it that, okay, you signed the paper and, and you as the individual control the straw man. So it's like a parent that has a child, and so you're responsible for that child until the child becomes of age. Yes, is that how all of that's happen? true. But you're only leaving out one entity, and that is okay. you, you don't know the definition, or you haven't displayed to let me know that you know the definition of a contract. You say it, that you signed for this, you signed for that. Okay, good. Number one, it was not a contract because no one else signed. Hello? Number two, there was not equal consideration on both sides of the equation because they didn't give you full disclosure that what you was buying or paying for, you could never pay it off, that you would always owe money on it. May it be taxes, may it be insurance, may it be whatever, they didn't give you full disclosure. And the main reason is they cannot validate the debt because they cannot create the contract, quote, unquote, that you supposedly signed because the contract was sold. Did you get all that, Ben? Now, yeah, now we're talking about any contract, not just purchasing a home. This could be any buying time, a listen, uh, Let me say it again. Anytime you sign your name, I don't give a damn what it's for. You create a contract. Anytime. Now, all the time, it don't have to be of a monetary value. It could be a promise to do something. I'll paint your house for you free. Well, you want them to sign a contract and they're going to do a good job or they're going to paint it a certain color. You want to sign it and you want them to sign it. So if they don't do what they say they're going to do, you have a right to sue them. You follow me? Right. So you're saying that they can't come back to me and say, well, okay, yes, we understand that there is a straw man, but you uh, represent that straw man. You control that straw man, so you signed the contract for that straw man. But you're yeah. saying they can't say that because they didn't sign the contract. Correct. That was yes. Okay. And I'll add, too, that you didn't know anything about a contract until you started listening to Ron March. I mean, excuse me, a straw man. You didn't know anything about it. Most people have no idea what a straw man is. And then when you tell them what a straw man is, they don't realize that they're responsible only out of their ignorance. That's why they call it a sure. S-U-R-E-R, sure. I guess that's how you spell it. You're the sure of the straw man because you're an idiot. You're signing your name thinking it's you, and it ain't you. So you didn't have full disclosure. With what straw man? Show me where the straw man come from. They can't tell you that. Then when they show you it's the, the name, it's got to be in caps. You say, well, that ain't me. What the hell are you talking about? That is not me. My name is Ron Marks. Big R, little O-N. Big M, little A-R-C-H, whatever it is. You follow me? I was taught that in grade school. The teacher used to whoop my knuckles and tell me, make the first one big and the rest of them little. Everybody in the United States got their knuckles whipped in the first and second grade, even at kindergarten. And you didn't realize they were brainwashing you then. Now, what about people who um, 
pay bills online and you put your name in. Does it does this uh, deal with uh, paying bills electronically? Well, that's a whole different animal. That's the same thing. You are paying it electronically when you pay online. Right. And that's what they've been pushing for all the time. And now they done ran into a rhubarb with paying online, so now they want to shut down the system in order to balance the books. That's what this is all about. Mm. So, yes, by you paying online, you're playing right into their, into their market. Now, you don't have a choice because some bills you have to pay online or some bills you have to go through that. And even if you don't go through that, now you got to go buy a money order, and then you got to buy a stamp, and then you got to go out and mail it in the mailbox. So either way, you lose. A lot of people say, well, I'm going to send it through the mail. Well, that's good. But then to sort the mail, it's electronically sorted so they can go where it's supposed to go. And if we talk about a shutdown, and the, everything is connected to the banks, so then the mail's got to stop. So they can't do the sorting. Can you follow me? Yeah, I'll follow you. Okay. All right. Now, I've got to get to this last part. We got, I just had it. Oh, come on. Man. I just had it. i got to get to this last part, and it talks about, and I want you all to listen. Here it is. They call it the National Currency Act. Bill, this is heavy. Okay. Now, Everybody, write down National Currency Act, and you can add 1864. This was how far back this thing was put into play. And, and B, it further enacted, it's starting now, because it, the, the uh, National Currency Act is probably, uh, I'm going to guess, 500 pages, maybe 800 pages. And I'm going to tell you exactly where to go to find what I'm getting ready to lay on you. And you should never, well, you should never forget this, because this is your lifeline of success. You go, once you get the National Currency Act, you go to Section 28, page 108 of the 38th Congress. You'll see all that when you get Okay, 38th Congress. 38th Congress is where it comes from. 38th Congress was 1864. Okay. And we're talking about the National Currency Act. It says, subtitle, Rules Governing Holding of Real Estate. This goes right to you, Bev. Okay. Uh, and B, it further enacted. Such associations shall not purchase or hold real estate in any other case of for any other purpose as specified in this section, nor shall it hold or the possession of any real estate under mortgage or hold the title and possession of any real estate purchased to secure debt due to it for longer than five-year period. Hello? <laughs> Every market you know of is either 15 years or 30 years. Right. But the, but the law says they cannot hold it for no more than five years. Now, here's the catch. When you're signing those papers, I'm going back to you, Bear, that you don't know what the hell you're signing, you're giving them some permission and create a contract that you want to go for 30 years. But the law says it's fraud to go over five years. But now, since you don't know what you were signing, now fraud comes into play because they did not disclose to you that once you sign this sheet, you're making it a 30-year mortgage. Hmm. And, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, next paragraph. By construct of law, a 30-year mortgage is fraud and is civically an injury to whoever is in it. How you get a remedy in, in that financial institution, whatever you got it in, is an agent, that financial institution is an agent of the government. 
all of your lending institutions are agents of the United States of America because all corporations go to Washington, D.C. As an agent of government, all directors and finance, all financial institutions take an oath to follow the Constitution and the National Bank Act. That's what we're talking about, National Security Act, the National Bank Act. And that, and that oath is registered with the controller of currency. Every one of them CEOs swear. Anytime you're in a corporation and you're the head, head the chief, you got to swear to uphold the Constitution of the United States. And then they tell you the Constitution don't mean nothing. Why do they keep swearing to uphold it? Judges, lawyers, prosecutors, CEO, police department, mayors, senators, every one of them swear to uphold the Constitution of the United States. Knowing that, knowing that if they do a 30-year mortgage and take an oath followed by the Constitution and the National Bank Act, and the body of law says a 30-year mortgage is not lawful, then they are violating their oath. No mortgage is supposed to be over five years, and if yours is, it is constructively flawed. <laughs> you can go through procedural procedures administratively or judicially because of the fraud. You can sue them for giving you that mortgage because they never disclosed to you that it was an illegal mortgage. That's like me selling you a car and never tell you that it was a stolen vehicle. <laughs> Unbelievable. Now, did this. All of this is in the National Currency Act. And now this next paragraph is going to prove to you that everything goes on in America. Number one, it's about money. And number two, it's about black people. Because they got nerve to put the Negro in the National Currency Act, not the Europeans, not the Chinamen, not the Mexicans, not the Arabs, the Negro. Now, before we get all bit out of shape, I think during the re and I'm adding Ron March, I think during the Reconstruction era, between 1865 and 1875, when they did the so-called Reconstruction, they went back and changed all the name of Moors to Negro. Hmm. Now, if you can just bear with me on that, let me read this to you. Summary on the Bank, a National Bank Act passed by Senate and House of Representatives. The Constitution is a contract. The supreme law of the land and the statutes at large are written in conjunction with the Constitution. You need to look up statutes at large. There's over a thousand of them. But they're very important, all of them, because you can never change a statute at large. That's why they call it statute at large. Now listen carefully. Anything else that is written, uh, written, you are not liable for unless you hold yourself liable for it. In other words, if it's not in the contract of the Constitution and it's not a statute at large, you, you, you don't have to do it. You only do it because you're scared. So traffic tickets, police department, uh, 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 city ordinances, city legis uh, uh, government legislation, all of that trash is nothing but trash. It don't pertain to you because it's not in the Constitution. It does not give them a right to do that. Now, just the knowledge of this is good, but you need to start practicing it as you learn more about it. I ain't through with you. The real issue of the Constitution was the nationality of the Negro. Now, I know there's no nationality of a Negro because a Negro don't exist. That's a label that the Packerwood gave you back in 1850s, back in them days. So it has, that's what I tell you. It had to be Moors. 
And they don't want you to have a nationality because nothing can work if you have a nationality. So let me just continue. Listen carefully. The real issue of the of National Bank Act and the Constitution was the nationality of Negroes and whether they could be citizens of the republic. Now, we all are citizens of the republic, but we're none of us are citizens of democracy. That belongs to them. We are all citizens of the republic, which is the Constitution. Black now, people... When, go ahead. When you, say, when you say them, you're talking about the corporation? Yes. Yes. That's all that your, that your enemy is a corporation. That's the name of the game. Because those Negroes are strong men. A Negro is a strong person. A Christian is a strong person. A colored person is a strong person. So they're all corporations that are governed and protected by the 14th Amendment, which puts you in the democracy. You didn't ask it. Martin Luther King went in there and sung it, and we shall overcome, and he signed everybody up. He didn't sign me up. Technically, he only signed himself up to be a Negro. I'm not buying it. That's why you hear a more talk about people like Elijah Mohammed, I mean, uh, Martin Luther King, Jesse Jackson, and a bunch of civil rights all-stars. Because they all sold us out. Black people participated in the formation of the formation of the United States. We were the ones that formated, made the formation of the United States, the original. The issue was, listen carefully, genocide and denationalization of the original heritage of the blacks, not slavery. Slavery had nothing to do with it. We were never in slavery. We had bad contracts. But the purpose no. of all of this was to denationalization, nationalize all black people and disconnect them from their original heritage of blacks, not slavery. Slavery had nothing to do with it. So all the public this, school system. Uh, so all of this, Ron, is about the land because we own the land. Yes, ma'am. You hit it right on the head. Yes. And we have nothing. We don't know nothing about land. And we own a lot of land, a lot of you people. And they're, and all they do is steal our land under a color of law. They make up laws to take your land from you. The public school system, which is a, a dog and no good, has miseducated all of us. The National Bank Act was following constitutional law. Everything I gave you about the National Bank Act or Currency Act was constitutional law. And I told you about black folks. So I want you, don't take my word for it, call me a liar, but I want you to go and find the National Currency Act and then go to section 28, page 108 of the 38th Congress and read it for yourself. And read where you're only supposed to have a mortgage for five years. Anything over five years is fraud. Well, <laughs> I mean, that's just, <laughs> wow. That's like you say, unbelievable. Unbelievable. And see, the only, only power in in their power is the belief, our belief that they have power. That's all it is. We believe that they know what they're doing because they taught us how to be, number one, dependent, and number two, to respect authority. Now, I tell everybody, I, I got out of service in 1964. They give you a serial number when you go to service. Do you know, Beverly, I know my serial number today R A one six six one two nine six zero. How the hell I know that thing like that from from what over a hundred years ago? <laughs> they brainwashed me. 
And they taught me to respect authority through that military. Now that they don't have a draft, they get the young boys in prison. They make them respect authority. That's all they want them to do. So when they get out, anybody with a shirt and tie on can tell them what to do. Right. Or a uniform. Or you? Yes. 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 And if you talk back, now the police department say if anybody talks back and you feel like they know law, they are terrorists. That's why you get, you get if you talk back and say, officer, uh, do you really know what you're doing? Or do you know that I'm sovereign? Or do you know that I am free and what you're doing is unlawful but I have a right to travel? He'll get on the phone and say, we have a terrorist and 13 police cars that come down with guns drawn. Woo. In a matter of minutes. And if you make the wrong move, they will shoot you down. Because they got to show a show of force in order to maintain fear in the community. Right. And they got black cops and white cops. It don't matter. If they put on that uniform, they're illegal. They're illegal, excuse me, and they all think they're doing a good job. And then you get those seniors after they let those young boys get out of prison that don't have anything, and they know they can't beat up adults or people. They'll pick on old folks. That's a normal thing to do if you're a crook and you're a tooth and nickel uh, stick-up artist, which 90% of my black boys are. They don't know what they're doing. You ain't going to jump on me. Because <laughs> I'm looking at you as you look at me. But a senior is prey. So now the news media blow it all up out of proportion. Gangsters are jumping on the seniors. And everybody says, oh, that's a shame. Oh, that's a shame. But it's not a shame when you take an idiot that don't know nothing, that they didn't teach him in school, put him in prison. He knows he don't want to go back, but he got to eat and sleep and go see his girlfriend. He ain't got to die. He know he got to steal it. He done sold all the bottles and still ain't got enough. Here comes Granny with a purse. Bam! Smack Granny upside the head. What else they going to do? <laughs> and I'm not endorsing this. I'm trying to tell you what the system is doing to you. And then you get on the TV and radio and say, oh, it's such a shame. No. Everything that happened in your community is controlled by the Europeans and the corporations. They are at fault. Because if they would give you jobs and quit fooling with your community, quit destroying your economics where you can take care of yourself, give you self-determination, you ain't got to worry about that pickle wood. But no, they take all of the things away from you to be dependent or independent, and then turn around and say that you're nothing but a, a gangster and a mob, and we don't know why it's black on black crime. But it's a damn shame that you bring it up, because you created it. Europeans and corporations created it, and then it was supported by the Boule and them Jack Lake preachers. Because they pissed him with a preacher right here in the city and took his pants. He driving one of them brand new cars, there's only four of them, in the state of Michigan. I don't know the name of that thing. He over there in the hood. You know what I'm talking about. Was oh, that it Wendell Anthony? Was it, was it Wendell No, it Anthony? wasn't Wendell Anthony. Oh, it no. was the wine. Wine. It was one of the wine. Yeah. He over there in the heart of the hood at 3 o'clock in the morning in a brand new car, only four of them in the city. And these thugs are standing around. He got nerve to go in there and somebody want to buy some gas. Now they're going to make an issue out of the fact that they pissed him with his ass, took his car, and took his pants off of it. <laughs> Everybody say, oh, it's a shame. They don't care who they get. You're right. If you need, if you got to have a fix, what difference does it make? And here a guy is with an with a automobile, and they only sold four in Michigan, Beverly. What is a young punk going to do with a car that they only got four in Michigan? I'll show you how, how stupid. The prisoners are, of not prisoners, but the, the gangster is. Mm -hmm. And yet they put him on the front page and make it look like they're everywhere. Oh, they did say that. Yeah. But I tell my wife, when you get in the car, always look in the back seat. Look around before you start going in your purse to get to go in the car. Take the, take the remote, open the car before you get there. All of that kind of stuff. 
If there's anything on the windshield, drive to a place where it's safe, then look at it. Don't get out of the car after you start it up and say, oh, I got a ticket or I got some on the windshield. And then you get out of the car and one of them will bum jump in the car and drive off. These are things that you should tell your, your spouse so they don't get hung up in that crap. And every time they see them bums, look at them. Don't turn your head down like you. Look at that son of a gun. Let him know if anything happened to me. I know you, you dizzy, crazy fool. Because all of them are stupid. The things they're doing is just out of line. One of them broke in the lady's house because she left her keys in the door. And then after he got her credit card, he had nerve to go down the street less than six blocks from the house and tap into the ATM machine and try to get some money out. Now, who ever heard of such magic? They was down there. He couldn't get it out because he didn't even have the damn number. Yeah. And they got now he's on the front page. Everybody said, oh, Lord, our community called. Oh, Lord. Oh, Jesus. All that old crazy crap. All right, man, we're over the wheel. <laughs> I done went off on the deep end. It sure is. I'm a, I didn't even pay attention to the time. Okay. You both be watching right. the time. I know. <laughs> here and not even looking at the uh, the time. Okay, Ron, so uh, we will be back next Wednesday at 6 o'clock p.m. Um, yes. I, I, I put, for those that was in the chat room, I put a lot of um, sites in there that Ron was talking about. So it's research time. You cannot say you don't know because you are getting the information firsthand. And your uh, class is on Tuesday at 6 p.m. Where at? Yes, 12511 Woodward. It's called Nandy's Knowledgeable Restaurant. It's a bookstore, a black bookstore, right on Woodward between Glendale and Davidson. And let's not forget to go to my website and give Ron March a donation so I can stay on the air. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Sarah. Well, we, until next week. we appreciate you. And until next Wednesday, peace and much, much love. All right, baby. Thank you. I thank you very much.